Now, Hollywood sure does love a good plot twist. The good guy was the bad guy all along, the bad guy was the good guy all along, or the good guy and the bad guy are both the same person inside a little boy's daydream while he's looking into a snow globe. Uh, you get the idea. But the fun thing is being able to go back and watch a film all over again and pick up on subtle clues that the filmmakers left in along the way that make you realize that the answers were right under your nose all this time. So let's take a look at them today. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight movie plot twists that were hiding in plain sight. Number 8. The Others so the twist here is that Grace and her children have been dead all along. In The Others, Nicole Kidman plays Grace, a widow raising two children on her own just after World War II has finished. Now The film is set in a mansion isolated in the countryside. Both of her children suffer from a rare disorder that makes them very sensitive to sunlight, so all the curtains have to remain shut at all times. Now After Grace hires three servants to help her with the household, she begins seeing signs, such as those pesky curtains being left open, leading her to believe that the house is haunted, only to find out that she, her kids, and the servants are all spirits who died in the house and are in fact the ones haunting it. Turns out they've been dead a while, they just didn't know it, and a new family, which are the ones that she refers to as the others, have moved into the house. The reveal at the end of the others might be less obvious for someone watching it for the first time today, but when it originally came out, it was just two years after the smash hit The Sixth Sense, and seeing as it kind of had the exact same plot twist, audiences guessed it way early into the film because the visual clues were so similar to The Sixth Sense. Number 7. The Prestige now, the twist here is that Borden has an identical twin brother. So Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale play Robert Angier and Alfred Borden, respectively, who worked together as apprentices for a magician and then grew up to become rival magicians in turn of the 19th century London. Now, Borden has a showstopper trick where he appears to teleport himself, which Robert becomes insanely jealous of and wants to steal for himself. Now, if only he could figure out just how Borden pulls it off. Now, Robert is led to believe that he's using a teleportation machine which was invented by Nikola Tesla. He tries travels to America to meet the inventor and purchases the machine for himself against Tesla's warning. The teleportation machine makes an exact copy of the object being teleported, so when Robert uses it on stage to make a copy of himself, he decides to drop the original body through a trapdoor in the stage where it falls into a tank of water and is drowned. Robert then sees an opportunity to use this to frame Borden for his own murder, so Borden goes to jail and is then executed. But Borden somehow shows up to Robert's show after his apparent death and shoots him. This is when we discover that Borden had an identical twin brother all along, and they had kept this a secret throughout their entire careers so that they could someday pull off the greatest illusion. Through the whole movie, Borden has always got a bag man or somebody known as Fallon, who was obviously Borden wearing a disguise. Not only is the double in plain sight to the audience throughout the film, but it was also in front of Robert all along. We also get a hint from Sarah that Borden is swapping places with Fallon, as she reveals that she knows when he means it when he tells her that he loves her. Some days he doesn't and it's obvious, which are clearly the days when it's not even her Alfred at all. Even as everyone insists that Borden was using a body double for the teleportation trick, Robert just can't accept the easy answer as the truth. Number 6. Saw the twist is, is that the Jigsaw killer was in the room the entire time. Now, The first entry into the Saw series begins with two men waking up in a restroom that looks like it's never been cleaned. Both men are chained to the walls, and between them is a dead man who appears to have shot himself. The body is still holding the gun, as well as a tape recorder. Using cassettes found in their pockets, the two men use the recorder to discover that they are being held by the serial killer known as Jigsaw, and one must kill the other in order to save their loved ones. They're also given a time limit of just Seven hours to complete the task. After the roller coaster of a plot is dished out through flashbacks, offering up several red herrings, as well as gory deaths, one man does end up killing the other. But to his shock, the dead body in the middle of the floor rises up and turns out to be the real Jigsaw killer. But the twist was literally in plain sight here. How Jigsaw was able to trick a doctor into believing that he was dead for several hours is definitely up in the air, as man, that took some crazy amounts of effort. Number 5. Star Wars so the twist here, obviously, is that Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's father. Now picture this, it's 1980 and you're seeing The Empire Strikes Back for the first time. When Darth Vader spoke those iconic words to Luke Skywalker, No Luke, I am your father. Did your German friend look at you and say, Why are you so shocked? As well as saying, What, you didn't know that that was coming? Well that's because the words Darth Vader roughly translate, and I use that very, very liberally here, to Dark Father in German. Like I said, it's emphasis on the roughly part. While Vater with the T means father in German, and in Dutch Vater with a D does mean father, the dark part it isn't a straight translation. Dunkel means dark and donker in Dutch. 
But you can probably stretch this theory to say that Darth Vader means Dark Father since Darth and Dark are nearly homophones. But this theory has been around for decades, and some believe that George Lucas started it himself as a way of making fans believe that he had planned on the reveal of the father-son connection between the Sith Lord and the orphan Skywalker all along. So take this one as being more of a retroactive twist hiding in plain sight. And don't forget, in the original Star Wars, Obi-Wan Kenobi does tell Luke that Darth Vader murdered his father, Anakin Skywalker. This too was obviously retconned in Return of the Jedi when Lucas had Kenobi conveniently come back from the dead to tell Luke that he was fibbing in the first film. Number 4. Wonder Woman The twist here is that Sir Morgan was Ares all along. 2017's Wonder Woman sees Princess Diana leave her isolated home to venture to the front lines of World War I to seek out who she believes is behind the Great War, none other than Ares, the God of War. Now, Diana is convinced that the German General Ludendorff is Ares, but after she fights him and impales him with the God Killer Sword, this does nothing to stop the war from continuing. The true Ares then reveals himself to be the politician Sir Morgan who has been pulling the strings behind the scenes all along. Now, Ludendorff always seemed to be too buffoonish to be the real Ares. If he was the god of war, then why would he need that drug that was synthesized by Dr. Poison to enhance his strength? The whole thing just didn't seem right. Sir Morgan, on the other hand, made so much more sense. It's Sir Morgan who gives Steve, Trevor, and Diana funding to go after Ludendorff. Sir Morgan must have sensed that Diana wasn't Amazonian. I mean, if he couldn't tell just because he's a god, then surely the accent gave her away, right? Now, Ares slash Morgan wants Diana to go after Ludendorff and kill him with the full intention of revealing himself to her so that he can show her that man is inherently evil and then convince her to join him or die. When you think about it, this makes a pretty bold statement that Ares would more likely be a politician than an actual soldier. Number 3. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 so the twist here is that Ego is the bad guy. In Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, the team are picked up by Kurt Russell's Ego, who turns out to be Peter Quill's missing dad. Ego then takes the Guardians to his home planet, a world which he has godlike control over because one, he is a god, and two, the world is actually him. Ego then tells Quill that he was in love with his mother on Earth, but he had to return to his home planet before his humanoid form deteriorated. This is why he was unable to be there for Quill growing up. The father and son form a bond, and then Ego reveals his real intent tension, that he went around the universe siring children with different species until he found a true heir. Quill is the heir apparent, and the only one who can help him take over the universe. Oh, and also Ego gave his mother the cancer that eventually killed her. Now, if it wasn't obvious from the beginning that Ego was going to turn out to be evil, then it must have been about halfway through the film that the penny finally dropped, because there was no discernible bad guy that was showing up. I mean, it sure as heck wasn't going to be Taserface. Ego's status as a villain in the MCU is even hinted at at the end of the very first film, when Yondu refers to Quill's dad being an ass, but also the guy's name is Ego for crying out aloud. Number 2. Captain Marvel, Avengers Endgame, and Spider-Man Far From Home so the twist here is that Nick Fury and Maria Hill were replaced by Skrulls. 2019's Captain Marvel left us wondering where the two missing Skrulls, Talos and Soren, could be hiding between the film's 1990s setting and Endgame. Marvel didn't keep us in suspense for very long, though, as just under four months later, the answer was revealed in the Spider-Man Far From Home post credit scene, where S.H.I.E.L.D. director Nick Fury and Agent Maria Hill shapeshift into those Skrulls. The reason why this one was pretty obvious was, well, because the internet guessed it before it was even revealed. Fans meticulously combed over suspects and clues until they crossed everyone off the list, leaving only Nick Fury and Maria Hill, mainly because ever since faking his own death in Captain America the Winter Soldier, Fury had largely taken a back seat to several major events in the MCU, which was very uncharacteristic for the guy who formed the Avengers in the first place. When Captain Marvel and Fury first meet, she asks him to tell her some obscure thing about himself that no one would ever know. He tells her that he can't eat toast if it's cut diagonally. This connects to a scene in Age of Ultron where Fury makes a sandwich and cuts the bread diagonally. Although this is debated because it's actually hard to tell, but it makes sense that the writers of Captain Marvel would have sought out something in the previous films that they could have used. But the telltale sign that is better than the bread thing are times when Maria Hill calls him by his first name, Nick, instead of Fury. When this happens, it suggests that Soren is in Hill mode and Talos is in Fury mode, such as their post credit scene at the end of Infinity War. The likeliest theory is that Talos and Fury swap whenever Fury needs to go off-world or needs to be in two places at once. And number one, The Dark Knight Rises. 
where the twist is Miranda Tate is Rachel Ghoul's daughter. Overbloated as it most definitely was, The Dark Knight Rises was a pretty decent action film with some heady socio-political commentary, but Christopher and Jonathan Nolan just couldn't fight the urge to stick with their brand of giving us just one more big plot twist at the end of the film. Only this time, nobody fell for it. When Bruce Wayne's back is broken and he's sent into a prison inside a pit that is most definitely against some sort of United Nations regulations, he's told the story of Raish al Ghul's wife who was lowered into the pit while pregnant. Now, Mrs. Ghul had a child inside the pit and Bruce believes this to be Bane, the big bad guy who is currently terrorizing Gotham City. The problem with this red herring was that anyone who's read the comics knows that Raish had a daughter, Talia, not a son. Had Bane turned out to be Ghul's son, it would have actually been a bigger twist, albeit one that surely would have angered fans. When the big reveal came at the end that the new CEO of Wayne Enterprises and awkward one-night stand Miranda Tate was in fact Talia al Ghul, fans the world over turned to each other and said, oh yeah, I mean, that, that's obvious, that, that's totally obvious. It seriously cannot be expressed enough that this plot twist did not work because well, literally everyone expected it. The internet called this practically from the day that Marion Cotillard was cast. Everyone called it that Nolan's final chapter of the trilogy would wrap back around to the Raish al Ghul and League of Shadows storyline from the first film. And the filmmakers and the actress herself kept telling the media that no, she was a completely new character, a love interest for Bruce Wayne, but nobody bought it. And therefore it went down as Nolan pulling a rather unnecessary twist. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight movie plot twists that were hiding in plain sight. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ, but the O is a zero, or you can swing by Instagram where it's the same handle, the RetroJ, but the O is a zero. But before I go, I just want to say one thing, my friend. I hope that you are treating yourself well with love and respect because you deserve all the best things in life, all right? And do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. You are a massive ledge, and I want you to go out there and utterly smash it today. I believe in you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.